This presentation, Leadership and Management 101, Defining and Applying the Principles, is brought to you by the Office of Formation and Discipleship within the Archdiocese of Atlanta. Hello and welcome. Thank you for your interest in learning. My name is Bill Clark. I will be the presenter for this program. If you have any questions or desire additional information, you may contact me on my direct line at 404-920-7635 or by email at wclark at archatl.com. Let's open our session with a prayer. You ask for my hands that you might use them for your purpose. I gave them for a moment, then withdrew them, for the work was hard. You asked for my mouth to speak out against injustice. I gave you a whisper that I might not be accused. You asked for my life that you might work through me. I gave a small part that I might not get too involved. Lord, forgive my calculated efforts to serve you only when it is convenient for me to do so, only in those places where it is safe to do so, and only in those who make it easy to do so. Lord, forgive me, renew me, heal me, nurture me, empower me, send me out as an instrument of your peace that I might take seriously the meaning of management and leadership. Amen. Why the focus on leadership and management? Well, leadership and management are roles that we assume every day. We don't have to think that it deals only with senior level or high level management. We lead and manage our families. We lead and manage our ministries. We lead and manage our relationships with other people. We lead and manage our communities, our parishes. Everyone, regardless of current role, plays the part of a leader and manager. That's why it's important to understand better the concepts of leadership and management. We will need to distinguish between the two terms, leadership and management. We will define both leadership and management and ask the question, are the terms the same or different? We tend to use them interchangeably. Well, here's what management is. Management is the process, keyword process, of planning, organizing, implementing, coordinating, and controlling activities. Leadership, on the other hand, is the ability or a quality to motivate and inspire others to achieve a desirable goal. The bottom line is this. Leadership is a quality. Management is a process. They are two different capabilities, which we will explain in more detail. Let's examine if management and leadership are really the same thing. The main difference between leaders and managers is that leaders have people follow them. Follow them. Managers, on the other hand, have people work for them, work for them. Leadership and management are not the same thing. They must go hand in hand, but they are necessarily linked and complementary. Now let's ask a couple questions about managers versus leaders. Are effective managers effective leaders? and are effective leaders effective managers? In reality, rarely 
are managers or leaders good at both skills? But it's possible. Why? Because managing and leading are two totally different skill sets, which we will explain. Let's review these different skill sets. Managing is a learnable process. You can teach people to plan, organize, delegate, control, follow up, etc. I've been a long time professor of management and I teach Management 101. So I know that you can teach the principles, the process involved in managing and people can learn how to become effective managers. Leading, on the other hand, is either an instinctive capability that people are born with, it's in their genes, or it's a trait that one adapts by emulating the characteristics, the traits of other successful leader, leaders. The learning curve, therefore, is that management is a process. You can learn the steps in the process and become more effective. Leadership is a quality or trait. You can learn and adapt the traits of other effective leaders to become a more effective leader yourself. Now let's review the skills that effective managers have and contrast them with the skills of effective leaders. So an effective manager, they're able to plan and organize delegate, control multiple activities. They're able to execute a vision, to be able to break down a strategic vision and use it as a roadmap for the team to accomplish something. They're able to direct day-to-day -day efforts. They can plan, organize resources, anticipate needs, and get the job done. Effective managers are comfortable with details. They like to establish work rules, processes, standards, and operating procedures. They're good at performance and results. In other words, getting things done on time and within budget. Now let's contrast the skills of effective managers versus the traits of effective leaders. Effective leaders have high levels of honesty and integrity. It's crucial to get people to believe and buy into the vision and the goals. They have vision, an ability to know where you are, where you want to go, and the ability to chart a path for the future to get you there. They have superior judgment. They're able to make the right decisions more often than not. They're able to inspire. They can inspire a team and individuals to ensure that they understand their role in the bigger picture. They are uncomfortable with the status quo. They need to do things differently, and they have the courage to think outside the box. They have superior communication skills. They're able to keep the team informed about where they are, where they are heading, and the roadblocks they might encounter along the way. So you can see that leaders are somewhat different than manager in terms of their basic skills and capabilities. So how can you become more effective in your role? Well, first study and learn the skills of effective managers. Learn how to plan, organize, delegate, control, and follow up. Then on the leadership side, emulate the traits or qualities of effective leaders. 
be open, honest, and have high levels of integrity. Maintain a vision. Exercise superior judgment. Inspire people around you. Have a bias for action. And develop superior communication skills. If you can hone in on both of these areas, management and leadership, you'll be more effective at either one and both. Now let's contrast the roles of managers and leaders. On the left are the roles, the typical roles of a manager. On the right are the roles of a leader. A manager administers, a leader innovates, a manager maintains, a leader develops, a manager focuses on process, a leader focuses on people, a manager relies on control, a leader inspires trust, a manager has a short range view, a leader has a long range perspective, a manager asks how and when, a leader asks what and why. A manager has eyes on the bottom line. A leader has eyes on the horizon. A manager imitates. A leader originates. A manager accepts the status quo. A leader challenges the status quo. A manager does things right. And a leader does the right thing. Now let's look at the heart, the instinctive nature of a leader. The heart of the leader is empathy, their ability to reach out and feel what the other person feels. They are human. They're able to practice effective human relations by remembering these most important words. The six most important words are I admit I made a mistake. The five most important are, you did a good job. The four most important are, what is your opinion? The three most important are, if you please. The two most important are, thank you. The most important word is, we. And the least important word is I. If you remember this simple series of words, you will develop the heart of a leader. Now let me ask you another really penetrating, thought-provoking question. Are effective leaders born or made? Are they a product of their heredity or their environment. Think about it for a second. Are they born or made? The answer is yes. Effective leaders are born and made. The key issue is this. If a person is born with certain innate, God-given leadership talents, they're able to instinctively become an effective leader. On the other hand, if a person doesn't have these God-given traits, they can learn how to become a more effective leader by learning and emulating the traits of effective leaders. Now we want to focus on management and leadership styles. The approach, the technique that effective managers and leaders use in getting their jobs done. Contemporary management scholars tend to differentiate between styles of management and leadership. There are several of them. A charismatic style of leadership, innovative style, a command and control, or an authoritarian approach, a pace setter style, a servant leader style, a situation style, and a transformation 
thoughtful style. We will look at each of these and give an example to better illustrate how leaders use a particular style based upon the job that they have to do and their own personal feelings and philosophies. The first style we'll demonstrate is the charismatic style. A noted example would be Oprah Winfrey. She's known worldwide by her first name. She's able to make a book into a bestseller overnight. She runs her own television network and magazine empire. She has 14 million Twitter followers. Her word can move the stock market up and down or change social issues. The behaviors of this style. You're able to influence others through the power of a personality. They are able to act energetically, enthusiastically, motivating others to move forward. They're able to inspire passion. When to use this style? This style is effective when you need a figurehead to motivate and inspire others to get things done. The next style is the innovative style. A key example is Richard Branson. He launched his first business at 16. He's the founder of the Virgin Group. He owns over 400 companies, anywhere from music to space tourism. His philosophy is dream big, then catch up with your dreams. The behaviors of this style, they're able to think outside the box instinctively and bring new thinking and action into play. When would this style, the innovative style, be appropriate? First, when something hasn't yet been done, so you need new innovative thinking, or when you need courage to go where no man has gone before. That's the innovative style. The next style is the command and control or authoritarian style. An example is Tom Coughlin, the controversial head coach of the New York Giants who's won two Super Bowls. He's a very stern taskmaster and disciplinarian. He never lost sight of his primary goal, that of the team, namely to win Super Bowls. The behaviors of this style, they follow the rules rigidly and expect others to do the same. They're rigid taskmasters, almost dictators in terms of what they expect of others. When do you use this style? Well, in critical situations where there's no time for discussion or liaison or dialogue, or when there are short deadlines that need to be met, you know, or for instance, uh, you need this style in the military, especially in combat, where you expect a lot out of people and you need to make commands in order to get it done. The next style is the pace setter. A good example is Jeff Bezos, founder of Amazon or Amazon.com. He set the pace that created the boom in the e-commerce industry. He was able to create a transactional interface between almost every conceivable online retailer with almost every conceivable type of merchandise. They started with books, but eventually got into everything. It was his vision that e-commerce could become a major force in the retail industry. The behaviors of this type of leader, the pace setter, 
They set high performance standards. They have lofty visions and goals. They have models for the desired behaviors that they expect from their people in the organization. When do you use this style? Well, when action is key and the results are critical, when deadlines are critical, or when you have to walk where people have not walked previously, like in fresh snow, they have to do something which has never been done before. That's when you need a pace setter style of management and leadership. Next is the servant manager leader style. A great example is our Pope Francis. First of all, he's the first Pope from the Americas, the first Jesuit, and the first Francis in papal history. He's humble and simple. He shuns protocol and bureaucracy. But he has exceptional empathy for the poor, the disenfranchised, the handicapped. The behaviors of this style of manager leader, they put service to others before self-interest. It's always about the other person, not about them. They focus on the basic fundamentals. For Pope Francis, it's love God and love thy neighbor. They tend to be self-sufficient. When do you use a servant, manager, or leader style? When a leader needs to reconnect with his followers or when a leader needs to lead by example. Of course, the greatest leader of all time who used this style was Jesus Christ. The next management and leadership style is situational style. A great example here is Pat Summit. She's the former head basketball coach at the University of Tennessee. She's now retired. She's the all-time winningest coach in NCAA history, both men's and women's sports. She had more than a thousand wins and eight national championships. The behaviors of this style of manager and leader. She was able to adapt her coaching and game plans to meet the player's skills and capabilities. In other words, she didn't force an approach on her team. She adapted the approach based upon the player's skills and capabilities. She was supportive and empowering. She let her players have free reign in terms of ex exercising their greatest level of skill. When do you use this style? Well, when an organization needs to constantly reinvent themselves. A great example is a sports team that changes every year based upon the players, their schedule, and their coaches. So this is a style that is situational. The last example of a manager and leader style is the transformational style. Two examples here because they're out of the same type of industry. First was Bill Gates at Microsoft and Steve Jobs at Apple. They redefined computer technology. They had a vision of what the future might look like and they worked tirelessly, aimlessly to make that happen. They created major new products and industries. They were able to 
transform personal productivity by things like the personal computer, iPad, etc. The behaviors of this style, they clearly envision a future condition or opportunity that others might not see or agree with. They're able to motivate followers to achieve significant accomplishments, to surround themselves with people much like themselves who are able to understand the vision and work towards it. They have a profound effect on their followers' beliefs. They become almost religious in their commitment to the organization. When do you use transformational style? Well, when there's a need for major, significant, or transformative change. That's the transformational style. Is there a best or preferred style of leadership and management? No, not, not really. Because most effective managers and leaders use multiple styles based upon the requirement, the, the thing that has to be done determines the best style to use. For instance, a democratic participative leader can assume an autocratic or almost dictatorial style if and when necessary. The key is to establish a preferred style that you can fall back on in normal or regular times. Okay, which style is most effective? Well, the answer is they can all be effective. You have to adapt the style that you use to the current need of the organization. For instance, a laid-back style would not work in combat where you have to give orders immediately to make things happen. We know that a servant style works well for Chick-fil-A, a great uh, Christian-based company, but might not work well in a transformational uh, requirement like in a high-tech industry. We know also that the pace setter style fits Amazon quite well, but might not work for others. So the key here is to adapt the style based upon the requirements at a particular point in the development of an organization. There's a key point about style. The most important thing about style is not which style you use. There is no one best style generally, but you have to adapt the style to the task at hand. However, the key is consistency. You can be a strong leader even a dictator, if you are a dictator or strong leader all the time, because people will learn how to anticipate and work with you. The leaders and managers that create a problem are those who vacillate back and forth between various styles. Okay, let's do an exercise. If you're working on this lesson by yourself, this can become a personal exercise. If you're with a group of people, each person should do this. Then you can come back together and compare notes and learn from one another. What you need to do, to do is to identify a leader or a manager who stands out in your memory. Could be someone from your family, a teacher, a boss, 
a friend, someone who you've worked with, as being the most effective leader or manager that you've worked with. Then indicate a couple of things. First of all, the one quality that made him or her extra special. And secondly, indicate the predominant style they used in managing and leading. So take as much time as you need and reflect on what made that individual so effective. Let's summarize what we've covered in this session. First, everyone at times is a leader and manager based upon the roles that we play in our life. Leadership is a quality. You can emulate the traits of other effective leaders and learn how to become an effective leader yourself. On the other hand, management is a process. It consists of several steps that you can learn. So you can become a more effective manager if you learn the process. Management and leadership are not the same, but you need to do your best to be as effective as you can with both areas. The style of management and leadership that you use needs to match, relate to the task at hand. And the key is to be consistent. If you have any questions or desire additional information, contact me, Bill Clark. My direct line is 404-920-7635 or by email wclark at archatl.com. Thank you very much for participating in this program. God bless you and good luck.